Pisces, my beautiful Pisces friends, this is your forecast of predictions for the year 2022. As I look at the overview of the cards, I see that you are having a very transitional year, one in which you're taking time, taking a deep breath and reestablishing the goals, the ideals, and the things that you've wanted for a very long time in your life. Let's take a look and see what the opening energy is for the reading. I have, it's time to release negativity. And this theme is seen in your reading this year. This is a year of profound healing, of mending, of strengthening your foundation. I really love this reading for you, Pisces. You have Jupiter. You are the natural ruler of the 12th house, hidden healing, that's that which is tucked away. And Jupiter, the planet of good fortune, abundance, is accelerating your process at this time. For many of you, you have just struck out on a new adventure. We see that you are very, very happy with where you live right now, your neighborhood, where you're at in your life. My home is my castle. You are feeling and loving where you're living currently. Your current neighborhood is um, described by this emperor card. It's probably the best, happiest place for you physically in the mundane and you are just enjoying every moment of your space your living uh, your living arena your neighborhood where you take a walk where you live daily we see this transitional card of the queen of passage the queen of passage is someone who is leaving sadness behind you're between day and night just it's always darkest before the dawn and we see the queen leading you into a period of time in which you are healing the year 2021 was the number five. There's some carryover from last year, from events, from some things in your past that you are leaving behind as you make this beautiful transition. You are very introspective. You're taking a deep dive into your emotions, into your history. When we look at moon energy and our emotions, we're really looking at where it all started. We see that the message for your sacred destiny is clear the past, heal the present. So for many of you, you are on this incredible healing journey that you are going to find exceedingly fulfilling. It's bringing you to a wonderful space in 2022. In your physical space, the way you are approaching your relationships and life, the way you present yourself to the world, Six of Cups. Six of Cups energy is a nostalgic energy, returning to a time of great happiness, remembering fondly the memories of childhood. And it really speaks to the fact that as a partner, you're having a, a rebirth, a reconnection with a partner with whom you have invested. Seven of Pentacles energy, taking stock. Your partner is very much in this journey with you of growth, of happiness, of living day-to-day -day life in a sweet manner, being very real. The Six of Cups energy is a rebirthing energy. It is a passage energy. It is Scorpio burning something to the ground in the past, letting things go, and allowing yourself this new beginning in a love with you, that you've had for some time now. Most of you have been with your person for a fair amount of time, and it's really just soaking in that love, the energy, the happiness, the home, really allowing yourself a time to step back and feel very relaxed and getting a lot of rest, a lot of sleep, and enjoying living in the moment, living in your emotions with integrity. 
in your house of earnings, personal money, and everything that you value, you have claimed them. The strength card, Leo energy, you know what you want. You and you, the person that you love are here together in this incredible energy, walking side by side, being in this space together. Your love is very profound. It has a strength to last many lifetimes. And in fact, the eight is the infinity sign. So whatever it is in terms of what you value, you are in the strongest period of happiness that you've ever allowed yourself to enter. Enter. What we see here with a partner's money is three of pentacles, collaboration. The two of you are a wonderful team, creating abundance in your life, working together strategically to have that foundation. What we also see is that your partner is going to have new opportunities to collaborate and earn and have a lot of different contracts. Your partner may be entering a time in their life when they work as on a contract basis as a consultant but it also means that they are building their own wealth and they're doing it in a very strategic way this is energy that you are both sharing i love where you're at in relationship right now i love the teamwork i love the investment i love the tenderness the strength and the courage for you both to live with integrity and that's what i see we look at your neighborhood and the surrounding area. You have never felt more in command of your happiness. Aries energy. You took a bold strategic leap. It looks like, you know, Aries is all about a new beginning and you're feeling as though you're in the best place of your entire life, having gained mastery and wisdom over the challenges. In terms of going to college or school or teaching, broadcasting, publishing, or long distance travel, your spiritual beliefs are in a period of just being put on hold. The Eight of Swords says that this year is not going to be a year in which you do a lot of that exploration. It looks like self-imposed restriction. It is a choice. You feel very blessed right now with this archangel protecting you, that you are in a period of stasis in terms of radical growth in different countries, ethnicities, cultures, or places. You are very much creating a new home and you are focused on what's local to you, not that which is in faraway spaces, lands, or places. When we look at your heritage, you are most likely, for, for the majority of you, five of wands, you have a lot of competing feelings about a mother, parents, family. When we look at the fourth house, we look at your heritage. That's your family. It looks like there's been some strife, some grief. It even looks like you have a parenting situation in which you remember that you were loved very much as a child, but there may not have been the peacefulness. There always might have been a feeling of contentiousness, of strife, of competition within the home, not with you, but between your parents. I feel as though they did not have the most ideal marriage. I feel as though there, it could have been a bit of a it could have felt stormy to you. It could have felt contentious to you. And it looks as though as you move forward, for many of you that are thinking about creativity, children of your own, um, the children of your mind and body, high levels of romance and chasing love, um, gambling, just frolicking. I don't see you in that energy this year. I see you very much in a healing energy, very introspective, very much taking the deep dive emotionally. When we look at your love and the way you love, you're seriously looking at the ways that your history has impacted the way you pursue love. For many of you in the energy of friendship we also see the sense of not having as many friends as you would like feeling as though you've been limited feeling as though your history 
has created a tremendous ability for you to love very deeply, but much of your life has felt lonely. And you're sharing that with your partner right now. You're healing areas of your life that absolutely will benefit you. And you are in this, again, beautiful energy of have, having created space to make a transition that's happy, healing, and rejuvenating rain, clearing the past, healing the present, and we really see this energy at work in 2022. When we look at your health, you're very healthy right now, temperance. You're eating well, you're exercising, you're active, you're balanced. Your day-to-day -day work life is a pace, place of peacefulness, of joy, Sagittarius energy. This is where you'll actually experience a lot of cultural differences a lot of you don't need to go out of your neighborhood actually to experience this wonderful Sagittarius ninth house energy you're living in a place day to day in which there's a tremendous infusion that's very gentle very balanced into different countries cultures ethnicities you are feeling glorious in your day-to-day -day life this great happiness a sense of satisfaction Satisfaction, the sense of reviewing the past, healing the past. Sometimes, Pisces, you are going to get all up in your head. We see this Gemini energy. There are times when you feel restless, like you aren't sleeping as well as you would like. I would say that for some of you, it could simply be a period of time of adjustment with time zones. But let's look into this energy a little bit more for you. What are the clarifiers? Why is Pisces feeling all in their head? You're thinking too much. You're trying to be logical. And it really shows that you may have some sense of remorse or regret or even feeling as though that's part of what you have to heal in your life. You may have some parent that could be aging, that could be in a situation where they need you and you're going to have to really heal the wounds that have come from childhood to be able to step into a helping energy. Now this won't apply to everybody, but what we do see is that your sleep is restless. Nine of Wands, you have a lot on your mind. You have a lot of goals. You have a lot of hard work that you want to accomplish at this time. We see the Six of Swords. Many of you have moved indeed. That is a card of moving metaphorically into a happier place, but also simply moving. We see that four of coins, that you really do like to stay in familiar places. We see that you're holding on to something in the past, temperance, a sense of serenity, happiness. But again, I love it. It balances out your day-to-day -day life in just a few weeks. In fact, it could be as early as two weeks from today, really calming down this sort of maybe angst that you're having at night, possibly worries about money. But you have transcended a significant rite of passage Pisces. It's incredible energy. Let's look and see the shadow side of what also might be adding to your worries, and that is the El Goliath deck is a shadow deck. It's about the subconscious mind. What do we have? We have something that you didn't see for a long time is haunting you. The hidden inner self. There's something I believe about a parent, about a situation while you were growing up about your the a false mask a part of your life that you just didn't see it for what it was we also see the queen of cups a beautiful mothering nurturing cancerian energy we see that there is a healing the shaman the card of the shaman that's what is happening you are again going through this incredible period of coming into your own power many of you may seek counseling for some of you for others of you you may actually make the decision 
to return to university or to school, to become a shaman, to learn ways of the shaman, or maybe even to take an ayahuasca or shaman's journey. So I really see you delving very deeply, really in a healing year that's going to help balance your life even more than it already is. On the mundane level, what do we see going on? We see two of swords, something, two of swords upright, two of swords reversed. You now understand what you didn't understand in the past. You understand, son of wands, you're coming in with this beautiful, fast-moving, Sagittarius, Knight of Wands energy. You have healed enough. You have found your adventure. You are seeking more adventure. You're seeking new experiences. You are on a journey within. You are doing the work. We see you advancing. We see you giving up burdens that were never yours to begin with from your childhood, the father of wands. You come into this incredible Leo energy by year's end and even sooner, I would say by the time of late July into August, you are really moving forward rapidly with creative energies, with creative interests. And look at this. These are two fathering cards. They're two kings, the king of pentacles. You are healing yourself and really you are nurturing yourself. You're parenting yourself. You're reparenting and filling in all the missing pieces that you didn't get in childhood. You're in a time of really ascending to such a high level of understanding that you have this beautiful Sagittarius blessing of temperance, being able to balance out everything that could have haunted you, everything in this Queen of Passage energy that had to heal. The Queen of Passage helps guide you from the darkness into the light. Allow her to do so. You're so strong. You have a partner with whom you can collaborate. You have a great support that you've created and built. And I have to say for you, Pisces, this is going to be a year in which you find your abundance, you find your wealth, and you do it through creative activities and endeavors. So we have that beautiful Leo energy that is your fifth house. After April, four months of resting is what I see. You're going to spring forward with this beautiful energy of the King of Wands. In fact, I'm going to place it right there. It's fifth house energy. It's Leo energy. And we're going to look and see in terms of your friendships, what's going on with your history, your relationships. It looks as though some of you may be grieving. We see the mother of pentacles, great energy with the father of pentacles. So we see that I feel that a parent will become more of a friend to you. I feel as though you're going to mother your friends. I feel as though, again, Four of Swords energy, a lot of healing taking place. The Moon card, Pisces, that's your energy. A deep dive, Mother of Cups. Again, you have Mother of Cups over here, Queen of Cups energy. So for many of you, you're going to revisit, rework, restore, renew through this period of time of the first, I think, eight weeks that we have Venus in Capricorn along with Mercury retrograde. I think it believe I feel as though it believes, it believes. I don't know why I keep saying believes. Your beliefs must have something to do with your healing. And I feel as though, actually, I've said it twice now, that it's your belief system, your ninth house, when we look at your ninth house, we're looking at Eight of Swords. There was something about what you didn't see about your family workings and history that as it heals, releases you to be so much freer in your life, free enough to manifest and to self-actualize, much like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You ascend to the top of the pyramid, you self-actualize, and you unleash all of the potential this year that you've always had. 
Pisces. It's I have goose pimples down my legs, across my shoulders. I am so happy for what you are experiencing, all of this serenity, all of this ability to take time for yourself for the deep dive, and I just can't say enough how happy I am for you. This rejuvenating rain is just washing, healing through your soul, your heart, and your spirit. You come back stronger than ever. Pisces, it's been a joy. I love you so very much. Thank you for a beautiful year, two years on YouTube. Send some love. Tell me where you're from, where you're watching the video from. Send me a love from Chicago. Thank you, Pisces.